Okay, so then the next uh, type of errors to look at is what we call identifier errors. So identifier errors are when you try and refer to something, um, some function or some variable that has not yet been defined. And this can come about for a variety of different reasons. So it can simply be you just mistyped the variable name, either where you're trying to refer to it or where you defined it in the first place, or you've just simply forgotten what it is you called the variable. Um, or else um, you're trying to refer to something that uh, hasn't been imported yet that you're trying to refer to when you're importing. Um, and then the hardest ones where you can get identifier errors are when the logic of the code means that the variable that you're um, trying to access has not yet um, uh, been defined, um, at least in some branches through the logic. Um, and so it's almost like a, a, a logic error, but actually it, it's coming up as an, as an identifier error. So undefined names, um, as I say, they can be simply just you've, um, you've, you've not defined something um, and then you've um, uh, uh, try and then refer it. There's a special warning here about if you're using Jupyter notebooks because, um, and particularly if you're if you're sort of zooming up and down the notebook, running one cell and going down a bit and running a cell and going up a cell, up a bit and running a cell and so on. What you end up as being defined depends on the order in which you ran the cells, which is not necessarily going to be the same as the order in which you've written the cells. And so you can get in a real kind of confusion as to why something is defined or not defined. And it's simply just depending on which, whether you've actually executed all the cells. So it's good to get into the habit of restarting the, the kernel, which completely wipes out all the um, existing definitions, and then executing your notebook cells from top to bottom um, so that you can get consistently uh, in, in the order in which things are, are run. Um, if you're working on a, 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 a Python file, a .py file in something like Spider, um, which is what we'll do during this this module, then in a sense that doesn't matter so much, but you can still get a bit confusing if you've defined things typing stuff into the Python console and then execute code without uh, removing all the definitions of things you've just happened to have typed in. So um, it's good just to be aware of where things are being, ident being defined and making sure that you've defined everything before you try using it obviously. Okay, so, and obviously if you've got a, a not defined variable, then you simply get a name error, meaning it has no idea what this thing is. And then there's another class of errors, which is down to doing bad imports. Um, so um, in particular, there's a very dangerous pattern of it, Python will let you do, but you really shouldn't do. So you can do this sort of syntax for importing. So from something, import star. Um, and then later on in your code, you want to go and use some things which are in that um, uh, uh, module something. So in this case, I've got a, uh, uh, I can assume that some, this module something defines something called wizgot, and I'm going to print it out. Okay, that's fine. That works um, until, um, somebody upgrades the something module and it no longer defines the wizgot um, symbol, no longer defines that as a constant, at which point your code will start falling over um, because wizgot is no longer available. And the very real problem here is that it's not going to give you any help trying to work out what's going wrong. So it will tell you that wizgot is an undefined name and you'll look at it and go, but that code worked yesterday, what's happened? forgetting you've updated the something package and um, not having read the update instructions for something that um, means that you've uh, no longer um, uh, realized that WizGot is not defined. Um, and so trying to work out how to figure out where, where WizGot has got to and, and what you can do with it is really, really tricky. So a much better way, rather than doing that from something import star, is to be specific about which um, functions and constants, whatever else you want to import from your modules. So it's much better um, if you're going to be just importing one thing from this something module to do from something import wizgot, um, or alternatively um, do as we often do with numpy from num uh, import numpy as np. Now, if um, if in this case, if if um, 
the new version of something doesn't include WizGot, then your code will throw an import error, but an import error telling you exactly what the problem is, as in um, WizGot can't be found in the module something. And that then tells you how you can go about trying to fix the problem. Um, at least it identifies exactly where the problem has come from. So for those reasons, you should probably almost never have an import state which goes from some module import star. Um, you just should not go and do that. It's just asking for trouble. Um, and now the, the complicated ones are where you have some missing definition from some sort of logic branches. By this, I mean, you've got some ifs or some loops, some for loops and while loops, and you're defining a variable inside that if or that while loop. Um, and you have to be careful to make sure that there is no way you can get through your code without defining the variable if you then use it after that. Um, statement. So to give you a, a little example, here's a very simple if statement. Um, and you can see that when I've run this, it's gone and told me that, um, in fact, it's told me that X is not defined. Um, but, um, and this is a exa good example of why you need to be careful about running your cells correctly. Um, so let's think about the case. If X was defined and was equal to two, then as we go through that if statement, result wouldn't be defined. Um, if x equals zero, because x isn't equal to zero, and then if the elif checks in, well, x is not equal to one either, so the result is still not defined. And so you get to the end of that block of code, and you end up with um, result not being defined, because um, neither of those statements in the if statement um, uh, uh, was triggered. Uh, and so there's a brand, there's a way through your logic that's resulted in in um, the result not being. Um, defined. Um, there's a similar problem you can get with for loops. Um, so in this case, um, I'm going to run a for loop, but this all looks like it ought to be fine. Um, uh, I'm looping through my uh, list x, and I at some point decide to set result true. The problem is when I run this, because that for loop was running over an empty list, it never actually executed anything inside the loop. There was nothing in X, so the for loop never ran. So result was never defined. So result ends up being a name error um, for that reason. So um, that's a nice example of, of how you can get something which looks like it should be OK. I mean, obviously, in this case, it's pretty obvious straight away because I've just got X as an empty list. But if you imagine that um, this is somehow inside a function and um, I've passed in X into this function. By looking at the code in that function where the error actually hit, there is no way you could realize that you might have a situation where you were passing in an empty array. And so we're getting as an identifier error. It's sort of maybe a really a logic error um, in this structure. And the way around this, obviously, is what you should have done is made sure that result was defined before you went into the loop. So um, yes, this is a kind of an example of how you can get a name error, but maybe it's really a, 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 a error of logic. Um, and then there's another class error you can do, which is by accidentally redefining function names. You remember that I said you couldn't use a reserved word as a variable name, but um, you can mess around with functions. So in Python, you can think of a function as being actually like a variable of a type function. And the value of that variable is the code that should be executed when you call the function. Um, and so function names are just like any other variable name. And you can assign values to function names and Python won't complain at you. So uh, here's a kind of uh, a slightly interesting example where we've um, OK, imported sine and pine from NumPy. And then for some bizarre reason, I've decided to write down sine equals print. That was not a clever thing to go and do. And now when I do print, right, sine pi, well, of course, what I'd expect this to go and do is, well, sine of pi is 0, so this should print 0. But that's not what it does. It prints pi and then none. And that's because I've managed to accidentally redefine sin from being the sine function from NumPy into being an, an alias of the print function. 
And so what he goes and does is he goes and prints pi and then prints the result of printing pi. Well, um, when you call print, it returns none. So um, what happens is it prints the value of pi and then passes none into the uh, outer print statement and then prints that. So that's what's going on there. Um, so um, this hasn't actually raised an exception. It's perfectly uh, legal Python. It's just almost certainly not what you wanted to go and do. And it's been caused about by being not um, uh, very clever with your um, uh, variable names. So you need to watch out here. Don't call variables the same as you're calling a function because you're going to get yourself in a real mess um, really, really quickly. Um, so, you know, again, just be be aware of... of, of um, not of, of, of what you're doing for assigning variables around. I say there are situations in which actually you really want to go and do this. And this ability of Python to assign a function to a different variable is a really, really useful thing. And in fact, we'll use that during the computing two course um, quite a bit. Okay, so I won't say anything really about logic errors at this point, because in a sense, it's very hard to go and um, teach logic errors in the abstract. You have to actually have some code um, to, to go and discuss this. So in unit three, you're going to discuss ways of avoiding introducing logic errors into your code. And in unit four, we'll go and say a little bit about some of the tools you've available to uh, help you uh, sort them out.